Tristan at Truck Lab with you today. We have a 2020 GMC Denali Duramax L5P. Customer complaint, reduced power message, truck has very low power, check engine light is on, smoking out the tailpipe. We immediately found 50 plus codes in the truck, led us to a bad injector, couple bad glow plugs and a bad NOx sensor up behind the turbo. We replaced the parts we could prove were bad, took the truck out for a test drive, still no power, immediately sets a P2002 for particulate in the exhaust behind the DPF. There's a sensor above the rear axle that measures four particulates. Anyway, so we started looking at some other stuff uh, there's a bad EGT sensor after we got to drive it a little bit in the passenger manifold, went ahead and replaced that. One thing I noted when we pulled that NOx sensor is the contamination on it. That to me screamed coolant, not necessarily soot from a bad injector that was failed to open. But regardless, we thought we got to get this truck to drive some. So we took that sensor, we go out, we drive it still super low on power and no codes I talk to the customer the customer says the truck has had four or five dps four or five egr valves countless NOx sensors countless egt sensors it's had a turbo or two it's had a catalyst or two it's had just countless countless emissions repairs in and out now it's out of warranty he's owned the truck for about ninety thousand miles uh, he's looking for a resolution now, so it's here. So anyway, we clean. We did all the common stuff. You know, the map sensor gets dirty. We took that out. We cleaned it. It's fine. It's reading good. We tested it. We looked at the mass airflow sensor. We cleaned that. It's fine. It's reading correctly, although the readings seem a little low. Looked at the fuel rail pressure sensor. The readings were about 800 psi off from each other. It's a redundant sensor has a high and a low circuit one goes high one goes low went ahead and replaced that sensor in its pigtail based on a technical service bulletin and the differential between the two readings from the sensor got the readings where we were happy with them still no resolution still no power still no codes started looking closer at some other things we decided are we just missing a common boost leak? All right, well, let's pressure test the system. So we were pressure testing the intercooler and the tubing, and we heard a leak right away. Well, eventually we figured out that leak was actually coming out the exhaust. So we removed the feed pipe from the EGR up to the bypass valve, blocked it off, holds pressure. Great, so the EGR valve's bad. So we pull the EGR valve. We start looking at it and we find that inside let's see if i can get it to open up there we go inside we see all this erosion again i'm thinking there's moisture in the exhaust system from something now you would think egr cooler common cause okay so we check the outlet with a boroscope. We check the inlet through the bypass valve with a boroscope. We see nothing. We have 20 pounds of pressure on the cooling system. So we go deeper. We already got access to the top of the manifold. So we stick a boroscope down that. The back of the manifold has some cooling in it. And maybe it came in from our hoses when we removed the valve, maybe not. We pulled the glow plugs to start looking inside cylinders. Cylinder seven had a wet exhaust valve. So we're thinking, did the in, did the exhaust manifold get enough coolant in it when we pulled that valve off that it filled it and it's leaking in? It seems unlikely. So we went ahead and pulled the manifold. Sure enough, head's cracked in between the two valves. Needs a new cylinder head, needs a new EGR valve. Already needed, you know, the NOx sensor, the EGT sensor, the injector, and a couple glow plugs that were bad. Worst part about this scenario for this customer is he's been dealing with these problems for the last 90 plus thousand miles and has mentioned the coolant consumption to the dealer, has had all kinds of warranty work done in and out of the shop constantly, 
all of this should have been resolved for him under warranty. Now it's out of warranty. So the good news is we found a resolution. We found the root cause of all of his problems. It'll keep the truck out of the shop, keep it on the road, keep him pulling trailers across the country like he does. The bad news is it's not going to be cheap. That's going to be an expensive repair bill and it should have been under warranty. Anyway, that's all for today. If you have a L5P with coolant consumption and re repetitive emissions equipment failures, you might just have a cracked cylinder head. Hopefully that'll save somebody a lot of time, whether it's a technician or a truck owner. Learn from our waste of time, our schooling, as they say in the industry. Have a good one.